As a major research institution, Arizona State University offers the most online bachelor's degree programs, along with world-class faculty and dedicated support. Discover why ASU is ranked number one in innovation for eight consecutive years. Tap to learn more. That's what I was thinking. This movie is like Satan is a driving car. It just goes by itself. Yes. Right. For God, we people need to get in and pedal, and then just, you know, God needs people. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. God can't pee when you're looking, but Satan <laughs> runs several world governments. <laughs> right. 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 That's absolutely <laughs> it. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because nobody told us Influencer was going to be an option. I'm your host, No Illusions. He's unable to join us today. He's too busy having a happy birthday. But sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bostic. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? I'm okay, Noah. How Just, are you? <laughs> usually you exaggerate there. I'm glad to see that you're you know, bringing it back to Earth. Interesting. We're also excited to welcome a brand new guest masochist, Karen, from the Deconversion Therapy Podcast. Karen, let me offer you the traditional first-time guest gam greeting. I am so sorry you agreed to be on our show. <laughs> I'm telling you, now that I've walked through all this, I'm pretty pissed too. So yeah. I can't wait to get into it. <laughs> oh, this was a rough one the, to, to be your inaugural episode. This was a tough one. Speaking of which, tell us, Karen, what will we be breaking down today? We are going to go over the, the lovely documentary movie called Furious Love. And with those two descriptive words, there's one of them that I feel very strongly after watching this mm -hmm. movie. <laughs> <laughs> and that is directed at you guys. You guys can guess. <laughs> it's the furious, if it's the love. Aww, but this oh, is, <laughs> we'll see though. This is sort of a godumentary. It's basically a man who owns a camera. Sure. And he goes <laughs> traipsing. <laughs> to different parts of the world to find the most sinful places. And he wants to film how God's love transforms people. Ooh. Yeah. And that is the most through line I can figure out for this movie. Sure, sure. 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 When I tried to put a through line to it, I, it was every story that a big brother's friend ever told you, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved the cutesy, bootsy gullibility of the first Finger of God movie, but wished it showed more of the demonstrable and extreme harm it's doing to the most dire places in the world, <laughs> you will love this movie. <laughs> yes, yes, this is a the lot sequel to Finger of God. If you don't remember that one, that's the one where the guy just completely credulously accepted when people would say, yeah, no, God gave me these gold teeth. These weren't put here by a dentist or anything. No, these just miraculously oh. appeared one day. Oh, man. Yeah, right. that's the source of uh, skepticism we're going with yep. here. This is mm -hmm. the movie version. Sometimes we're at like an atheism convention or something and someone will be like, oh, what do you do? And I'll be like, we make comedy podcasts about religion. And they'll be like, oh, I don't actually think anything's funny about religion. And there's like a weird moment where I go like, <clears throat> I mean, I agree. That's true. This is also, it's bad. It's this, this is that movie. This feeling is the movie. Is this documentary. Okay, absolutely. All right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Wow. I, I, you wanted me to pick one, but <laughs> what I was saying is this young man who did this film obviously got a camera for Christmas. So I don't know if this is the worst best for filmmaking. Okay. Because if your one job is to have the camera, how come the angles and the out of focus, anyway, it's it's not good. But maybe it is the best, worst, unenthusiastic, healed people. <laughs> <laughs> I have never yes. seen... You ain't kidding, man. Wow. People who receive miracles that are going to change their life Mm -hmm. just look like, you know, they got to the front of the line at the DMV. There's not excitement. There's <laughs> okay. just... Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of like, oh, yeah, that's my... Uh-huh. Uh yeah, no, I can walk again. Great. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. 
<laughs> if your miracle healing ends with you done, you didn't do great. You did not do a good job. So, They're not happy with you. Now, I was going to go with best worst excuse to go to a brothel. Uh, yeah. As Karen said, this guy's going to go to all the most sinful places in the world. No, it's because I want to document the sin. I want right. to so fix it. There's a I lot. Mean, wherever of, there are boobs, I got to find the boobs. <laughs> yeah, sinful, well, the there's boobs. sinful boobs. <laughs> they, healing. He needs to heal. Those. <laughs> I need to lay hands on. No, I need to. Oh, wait. Laying on. <laughs> Honestly, best worst erection is most of this movie. I mean, we'll, we'll talk about the one moment where we, the erection might as well get its own interview, okay. but, but we'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> is that what changed the camera angle? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what finally evens it out. Yeah, yeah I yeah. figured it out. And I'm going to go with best worst. That thing is also my religion. So like, here's the thing. You could watch this movie and be fooled momentarily into being like, these guys are the good Christians because their whole angle throughout the film is like, you know, the church is so busy with rules and this and that and the other thing. And we're all about love. But then as the movie shows more and more harm that these people are doing, they eventually just start taking credit for literally everything in yes. their religion. This food is my religion. Yeah, <laughs> patting on the back is my religion. Absolutely. Friendship is my religion. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right, well, we've got some next level bullshit to prepare for, so we're going to keep the break brief, but when we come back, we'll dive into all the naive credulity that is Furious Love. Psst, kid. Hey, hey, kid. Eli, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm a bookie, see? Taking bets on the college games, kids. Good odds, if you know what I mean. Okay, I'm pretty sure you don't know what you mean. But Eli, if I want to bet on sports, I don't need sketchy websites or whatever you're pretending to do. Now there's DraftKings. Oh, so they finally got Charles, huh? What war is he going to? Do you no, know? No, no, no. Eli, DraftKings, it's a website where adults can safely and responsibly bet on their favorite sports. And DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking you up with a can't-miss offer to start the season strong. This week, new customers can bet $5 on college football and score $200 in bonus bets. Wait a second, is this legal? You don't even have an overcoat, kid. It's it's legal, it's secure, and if you'd like to bet on sports, it's the best way to play. Life's more fun when you're in on the action. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use the code GAM. New customers can score $200 in bonus bets instantly when they bet just $5 on college football. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code GAM. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort, KS, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility terms and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. What, what, what was that? I don't know. Law stuff. Anyway, scram before my heavy puts the work on you. Yeah, beat it. Karen, he roped you into this? I was promised I could hit someone with a wiffle bat. Oh. Okay, understandable. All right, everybody, welcome to the first writer's meeting for Furious Love. Hooray! Yay! Now, I'm going to be straight with you guys. And girl. and That's that's right, and girl. For me, this project is going to be about going into the darkest places in the world, really just plunging in there, you know? Totally. It's like evil might want to resist, but God will fill you with his holy light. I mean, you know what I'm saying, right? To totally, yeah. Sorry, guys. Phrasing? Uh, what? Seriously. You don't find anything wrong with saying you want to resist, but God will fill you up? I mean, oh, only if Christianity is wrong, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm happy to force the Lord into the deepest, darkest hole the devil hides, and nobody will stop me. Totally. Um, You know what? I, I'm just going to get something out of my car. Sure. No problem. Totally. Yeah. That's like the 32nd woman we've hired who forgot something at home super fast. Uh, 34th, actually. 34th, yeah. 
<laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. And we're going to open up with a warning that this movie has graphic images in it. It doesn't. It does not. I think they mean people of color. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I, I think they mean Africa, the continent. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> yeah, actually, I, I'm pretty sure they mean like women in their underwear occasionally. But yeah. Yeah, so this the movie, it starts like, like one of those overproduced videos of how to put your screen protector on your new phone or whatever, you know, <laughs> lots of, a lot of just random glitz in the opening. The, the credits, we get like a tornado and a tsunami and shit, like bad graphics versions. Absolutely. Like I was like, is this Twister 2? They was so <laughs> in depth with this epic promise of this is going to blow you away. Right. Yeah. Whatever the like second most cheap package for disaster <laughs> stock footage is, that's the one he bought, right? Not the cheapest one. No, no. He, yeah, he spent some, yeah, he, he spent a few $5 on this. Yeah. So and now, and what we're trying to say, by the way, with the tornado and the tsunami is, see, these are examples of God's furious love, the way that sometimes he loves you so much uh -huh. that he rips your home to pieces and kills your dog with a tornado. It's like that. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah, and then he gives us a quick, like, last time on Finger of God bit to catch us up with the prequel. Hi, everybody. I just want to remind you I am the most gullible person possible. Here's a quick montage <laughs> of me being fooled by bad body magic. Okay. Yes. I can't believe you guys watched a different movie about from the same thing. That. Oh, yeah. That's human sacrifice right there. <laughs> it really. Our I, show I is a death cult. Yeah. <sighs> <laughs> so, yeah, but so he's he's gonna put God to the test. He's oh, sorry, he's gonna put God's love to the test mm. in this movie. That's the promise he makes. So, as a former Christian, there's a big thing in the Bible that says, "Do not test the Lord thy God." So, I like that already. He's sort of just absolutely saying, "I haven't read this book, yep, but I do have <laughs> this camera." Yep, right, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, no, putting his love... That sounds like some unabusive boyfriend says, let's mm -hmm. put our love mm -hmm. to the test. Yeah, but in this case, Darren and God really deserve each other. It's one of those relationships where you just sort of gently unfriend them both on Facebook <laughs> yes. and let them work it out on their own. <laughs> yeah. He goes, it all started with Jeff Jansen. Jeff Jansen is this faith healer, terrible human being that was still saying in 2021 that God was going to reinstall Trump as president. He was in jail for grand theft at the time. These days he's dead, though, which is probably a better move mm. Yeah, um, on his part. Karen, you actually found a, a little fun fact about Jeff Jansen here. Want to let us know what you found? Yeah. First of all, I had no idea that I lived in the same town as him at one point. Never heard of him. But I did look him up and there was a quote the year before he died. Quote, evangelical pastor Jeff Jansen, a self-described prophet, aren't they all self-described, <laughs> has been asked to step down from the ministry he co-founded and has chosen, chosen to leave his wife and family to, quote, pursue his own desires. <laughs> yes, his wife and eight kids. Are you at the fucking time. kidding me? Nope. They yeah. save money. You know when you lose your job and your family at the same time and it's for totally cash money and chill reasons? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. And you know when he died, people are like, that was God's judgment on him. Yep. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But our filmmaker says, you know, I went with Jeff Jansen to Africa. I was really feeling the white man's burden. So I oh, went yeah. to Africa, to Tanzania to help him Christianize people. And so we, we go to Tanzania with him and he's like, and this is where I found out that we were actually going to be casting out demons. A lot of demons in Tanzania. Mm, interesting. Yeah. No, and, and we and, and we watch this. We watch people like get filled with the Holy Spirit, but then get, quote unquote, attacked by demons and have to like they have to drag them to a separate place to exercise the demon. And interestingly enough, the demons can only attack the people who are already sort of culturally inculcated to this concept, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Not, they, they, don't, right, right. they don't get any of the cameramen for some reason. Yeah, they didn't get Darren. It's, it's strange. Also, like, I'm sorry, but as someone who's just been to enough drug-filled concerts, 
it's a fucking chill out tent. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, it's even the same shape and color as a chill out. I'm not sure you bought them from chilloutents.com, but you definitely got the chill out tent from the same chill out tent supplier. I, I thought they were going to shove an orange slice into one of these demonic kids mouth in a second. So yeah, they had the tent from, yeah, Crusade Camp Co. And it said he thought it was for the hearing impaired, which that made no sense already. Why would, would you be? put the hearing impaired in a closed white tent at the back of a crusade? Right, far away from... <laughs> now you can't You know, hear. so nobody has to see him. And you can't <laughs> see, yeah. But I love that it ended up just being for the people who were like chalking up demons mm -hmm. and for press. Of well, yes, course, yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, and he goes like, I was about to learn it from one person that I came to call Abercrombie girl. <laughs> and we see this girl in this Abercrombie hoodie. And now I should be clear. It's not like she dies at the end. He could have just asked this woman her mm -hmm. name. <laughs> he could have thought so of her as a human being in any way, <laughs> shape or form. <laughs> He goes, I never thought I'd see a I'd be face to face with a demon possessed person. And I'm like, yeah, me, me too, Darren. Mm. You and I both. <laughs> yeah. And you didn't, Darren, but keep it rolling. Yeah. <laughs> also, Darren, can I say, as someone who has a toddler in a hitting phase right now, you ain't seen nothing yet, Darren. Okay. These people, <laughs> these people are downright treats compared with my Come three year old. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but this was, in his words, his first exposure to the great war of the invisible. Yeah, he he like he pans around all these people that are demon possessed. He goes like, you know, these people aren't suffering from a mental illness. They're not just imagining this. And I'm like, what makes you say that? I said it on camera. It has to be true. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'm there. It's important. I also have to point out that like it's not particularly good demon faking, right? Like at first, I was like, oh, I really don't want to watch people like get abused or beaten, but like. Everyone's heart isn't really in it. So there's a lot of like big smiles to camera with them being like, did you do it for the white guy? No, I got to do a demon thing for the white guy. <laughs> That's, <laughs> it. That's it. Because this has been going on for decades. And you know, they're yes. just like, here are the white people. They came for a show. We're going to give them a show. Yes. <laughs> They just all gather up together. All right, um, everybody, do we know who is demons this week? And are we all off book? <laughs> God damn it, Stephanie, put your script away. <laughs> Stephanie, I'm not going to talk about this again. We're not going to have this fight. Listen, Amber Crombie girl. <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie Amber Crombie girl Nelson. You yes. fucking learn your lines. <laughs> So, but then we're going to get introduced to our sort of basic cast of talking heads. First, we meet J.P. Moreland, author of some dangerously stupid fucking demon book. <laughs> Listen, this J.P. Morgan guy, first of all, the whole thing was, it, it looked like it was a high school presentation, the way it was filmed. Yes. You had your action scene, and we forgot, remember Abercrombie Girl, it shows her like writhing around and foaming mm -hmm. at the mouth. Then he still shots her. And he yes. does a little wonder years. You probably wonder yep. how I got here. While her face <laughs> That's me. is right on just suffering there. And he goes into the little his monologue of he's at war because he always wanted to be in the military and never could. And then we go to this talking head, J.P. Moreland, who when I looked up, I found a little video on him. Ooh. Yeah. And he said, that at one point, he and his wife asked God for a pool table, a fancy pool table, the professional kind of pool table. And you know what happened? What? He was at his sister's cookout the next week, <laughs> and a random guy came up and said, I know this is weird, but are you looking for a pool table? <gasps> so don't tell me. Wow. Eli, <laughs> don't tell me God isn't real. Karen, I what are we going to do our podcast about now? We have so right, much time yes. to fill. I just, I love that he specifies fancy pool. Like, I asked God for, and I'm not some cheap fucking bar no table. Bro, right? yeah, no secondhand God can do anything. garbage here. And he's interested, not in the homeless, not in people who are, he's no, interested. No, in my fucking pool table. Yeah, he'll get around to the homelessness after he makes sure that I'm getting a real velvet cover top, okay? Yes. <laughs> this isn't just for billiards. This is for a bunch of games. I also love, JP also shares this story where he's like, one time I was on the radio with a big, important pastor. You don't know him. He lives in Canada. 
And he turned to me and he was like, we don't believe any of this bullshit. And I was like, I do. And he was like, yuck. Yeah. Anyways, that's my story about how cool I am. <laughs> well, so now that's that's actually George Otis Jr. That's a different talking head. Yeah, he's like some prominent Christian once told me I was full of shit. And then I told him, and this is his actual quote, it's okay that you don't know some things. Boom. Got it. That's it. Right. But the implication of that is because I do know yes. some <laughs> yes. things. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> And so, but this section wraps up. I love this fucking line so much. Darren, the the narrator and cameraman, he says, you know, I spent my life not wanting to know too much. And and then his point is that like, you know, because if he knew too much, then there would be like, you know, with great power comes great responsibility or whatever. But I just wrote in my notes and it shows, Darren. Right. It shows. <laughs> <laughs> So then he introduces us to the group of radical Christians that he rolled with in Tanzania. And and this is one of those things where like him and a group of fucking white saviors wander around to these desperately poor countries. And they're like, yeah. hey, you know, let's do We're going to do some faith healing. And these desperately poor people are like, I'll try any fucking thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And the scene like that's what Darren demonstrates for himself, but he doesn't get it. Yes. Right. Because he's just filming. He's like, bah, 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 white savior. And then they're like, hey, Darren, do you want to do some magic healing? And he's like, oh, I don't have healing powers. And the guy is like, oh, I'm very poor. And I would like the food you're going to give out after this experience. I assure you, you do have healing powers. And Darren doesn't <laughs> learn they're faking it. Darren learns, holy fucking shit, I have magic healing powers. Yes. Uh, so I, I was secondhand embarrassed for Darren. So Darren's <laughs> this young guy holding the camera. And first of all, did you did you spy that silver big Cuban link bracelet he was wearing? I did notice that, yeah. Just among all these poor people who it's probably oh, like twinkling in their eyes, you know, here are the white people with jewels on. Mm -hmm. And then the other man who was like, yeah, pray for my knee. Darren was so, he was fumbling. He was like barely touching the guy's knee. I was saying he looked like a virgin pinning on a corsage at prom, like on his prom <laughs> day. Like, do I touch here? Do I not? He finishes. He's like, did you come? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you, the man, his face was exactly like the prom date then because yeah, right, the man right, was no, like, is totally. that it? Yeah, no, that was but, great, man. He, you know, they're wanting to please. These are people coming. Right. They probably, you know, baked feasts for them and gave them, you know, things from where they are. And these guys just walking around with their fucking bracelets going, does your knee feel better? What about the amputees? I want to see sure. some amputees get killed. What about something that's like actually measurable in some way other than, no, no, it feels a little better now. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Darren even admits, he's like, I got to be honest. The only thing I was doing was trying to make it look like I took long enough for this to be reasonable. But then all of a sudden he was better. Yeah. Yeah. So then we we hear from Chris Vallotton from the one and only Bethel Church in Redding, California. Now, Karen, I don't know if you're familiar oh. with Christian Hogwarts. I think I think I'm familiar. Oh, are you? Really? Oh, yeah. We've done quite a few things on Bethel. I love I'm going to apply for their spiritual healing school or whatever the fuck it is. Um, because I really like the story where a woman went to the police because they prayed for her at a grocery store and made her stand up and she fell. That's my favorite. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. I hadn't heard that one. We got <laughs> lots of stories. Okay, but of the Bethel Christian College stories, the best one by far is the wall walking. So for those yes. who are not familiar, <laughs> what? students at Bethel Christian College on a regular basis send themselves to the emergency room mm -hmm. trying to walk through, or in this case, run through walls with their Jesus power. What? They they lay on graves to soak up the ghosts in them. They are they so do. fucking fun. It's mm -hmm. so they're it's, the best. Yeah, and they produced one of my favorite fucking nemesis, uh, Sean Foyt. So of course, yeah, yeah. I can't uh -huh. even with him. But 
Also, and sorry, just the audio file on me. Chris's mic during this interview is clipping like a fucking weed whacker. It's <laughs> driving me crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> well, and then that guy, George Otis, he comes out and like, this is from Eli's Best Words, right? He goes in, he goes like, you know, the problem is, is that when you see Christians today, they're mostly worried about being judgmental, power hungry hypocrites. And then you're like, well, that's. That's actually our line, uh, George, I, if you don't mind. <laughs> but then, of course, later he's going to say, so what you need to do is exercise demons with your white savior powers, right? Right, yeah. And he also doesn't say, and maybe we should stop fucking their kids. So, you <laughs> yeah, know, maybe right. George is, yeah. he's not exactly tuned into the problem. No, no. Uh -huh. It's not good. And this is where I was like, wait a minute, who, who's this film for? Was this like for non-believers? Because all it is is proving how strong Satan is. We're not seeing much of that God yet. Mm -mm. But I'm telling you, Satan's everywhere. Yeah, yeah, no, he's really nailing it. Yeah, well, so now to be clear, the, who this movie was for is it was for Darren. It was for the filmmaker to write oh, off a bunch no. of travel and get people on Kickstarter to pay for it. But yes, yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, as ter in terms of who the audience was, who the fuck even knows? Us, really. Yeah. Fuck me. Yeah. So then we're going to head to Indonesia. We're going to meet Pastor Philip Mentova. Speaking of travel that he got Kickstarter people to pay for. Uh, well, this pastor, I'm just going to say, is not unhot. Sure. So yep. putting that out there. Yes. No, he is the fuckable Filipino Joel Osteen. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Or the um, what's the the guy with his pants off all the time? Carl Lentz. Yeah, sure. Oh, so I was going to say Jerry Falwell Jr., but yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> if I ever see that guy's belly cleavage, pelvis cleavage <laughs> picture again, I'm suing Liberty University. Yeah, yeah right. Sure. Right? So is he, Karen. So yeah, he actually, yeah, as it turns out. I want my horses back. <laughs> But so we see this montage. So Philip Mentov apparently super, super popular in Indonesia. He's with the most popular pastor in the fucking country. And we see him pastoring to crowds of thousands. And we see these like giant altar calls where you're like kind of afraid that people are going to get crushed to death like a European football rally or something. Yeah, it right. feels, feels a little dangerous. <laughs> like maybe we need an altar, like red light, green light going on here. Yeah, right, yeah. And then, and this is supposed to be a good thing, Darren's like, and hear me out, he hires mostly unpaid children for his ministry. That's so yes, cool, that right? Is fantastic. I love. And I wrote in my notes, child labor. Yes. Kids are just as good as this as adults is not the recommendation for the profession that you <laughs> yeah. think it is, Darren. Yeah, right, right, exactly. I always thought about that there was like a 7-year-old pastor when I was in second grade. He's a pastor too. I'm like, well, I guess that can't can't take much then because he's a dumb kid. <laughs> so, and also, well, they're telling us about that. Yo, you know, like he uses child labor and he doesn't even compensate him. During that, we're watching children like openly weeping with the love of Jesus. We're watching that terrifying Bible camp B-roll. Mm, right? That kills me. Yeah. yeah. And then... Mantofa starts telling him about the demons hiding under Darren's bed. This is the most, you know, like older brother's friend telling you a ghost story kind of shit that happens in the entire movie, right? Okay, this is the medicine man, right? The demon witch doctor. Yes, tell us, tell us the story, Eli. <laughs> yes. So the, this, he had a witch doctor in his hometown. This is the story that Philip tells us. He had a witch doctor in his hometown, and he would do a yearly fucking magic show where he would cut his stomach open, show everybody his intestines, bite his own intestines, die and then rise from the grave. And look, I don't know what this is based on, if anything, but as someone who has participated backstage in several magic shows, I could not get past the image of everyone just sitting backstage. Good show. Really good. Really good show. Uh, one note, one note, you sort of got your face in there a little too deep this year and we didn't really see the biting. So I think a lot of people thought you just sort of sneezed into your innards. How are my angles? And I love how they're just spinning these stories and they're called bang testimonies like you can bank that this little story is going to make you money at a church when you tell it but sure why isn't Darren going excuse me I'm going to cut here can you tell me where that man is <laughs> we want right. to see this on film right if the, if every year he cut he bites his intestines up what? that would be a great thing for your document I want to see the newspaper where's <laughs> sure <laughs> uh 
Maybe some documents in your documentary Maybe. somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. iPhone recording is fine. But then, but so Mantova tells us, you know, he heard about this guy and he was biting his intestines. And, and so he decided he was going to go there. And I'm like, please tell me you challenged him to an intestine biting contest. But no, <laughs> he demanded that he repent from Jesus. And then Philip Mantova starts telling us about that guy's dream. Mm -hmm. He's like, and that night he dreamed. And I'm like, hold on a second. <laughs> How the <laughs> fuck do you know what he dreams? <laughs> But he dreamed that Jesus came and stole away all his powers, so he became a Christian. Bam. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Great. And I just, I, this is a stupid clarification, but this is just kind of illustrates how dumb and, and gullible Darren is. He's like, you know, I was super impressed. You know, he's a very popular pastor in the world's most Muslim nation. Yeah. I'm like, no, fuck it isn't. So the mistake he's making here is that, that Indonesia has the largest Muslim population of any country, but like, in terms of as a percentage, it's the 34th most Muslim nation. That's how much he understands about mm -hmm. what he's saying to you in his document. Exactly, yeah. I know. That's why, I mean, I almost feel bad for Darren. I know, you guys. Yeah. It, it's just, he was a kid sitting alone at a table, and I swear, his parents <laughs> are like, let's give him a camera for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And he went out. Yeah, sitting alone at a table, and he was like, some mumble mumble god powers and everyone was like what and he was like oh no it's just my friend was telling me about his god powers but you guys were talking about sports or something <laughs> <laughs> if you guys want to hear about god's superpowers i guess i could tell you but you'd have to come sit at this table over Poor here Darren. now did you talk about that mantofa the not on hot guy talks about how he knows the holy spirit so well they're on a first name basis okay yes, and the, his first name is holy I left for a while. <laughs> he goes into this whole thing. He's like, if you know the Holy Spirit is a friend, I know all my friends by first name. Yeah. His first name's Holy, his last name's Spirit, so I call him Holy. I have to call him Mr. Spirit myself. <laughs> yeah. If I'm close friends, I know their middle name. So I want to know Holy fucking Spirit's middle name, whatever it is. It's uh, it's Bethesda. It's Bethesda, it's, it's, it's holy Bethesda spirit. <laughs> and then, and just in case the story of the intestine biting witch doctor was too credible for you and you wanted something a little more fantastical in your life, it's time for George Otis to tell us about the shortcut to enlightenment through Tibetan Buddhism, which includes, I kid you not, Whew. taking the top of your own skull off. Like, um, you ever seen the man with two brains? <laughs> right, right. This is... This is the best. So what he's talking, he calls it the chud. It's not the chud. It's the hood. And that's because it's based on a Tibetan word. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> and he's, <laughs> Chud is a great movie. So. Fuck <laughs> sure. Oh, so, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so this is actually a thing in Buddhism. It's a metaphor. What you do for, for in defense of Buddhism, he said on his atheist fucking podcast, is you go sit in a cave and you meditate on what it would be like for your body to decompose. And some people say it's a very enlightening experience. This idiot who heard it during a game of Pastor Halloween special, uh, you know, telephone thinks they actually cut off the top of their skull <laughs> and then piece by piece put their body yes put their body in it and then it comes and gets eaten by demons while they accompany their own dismemberment on a flute made of a human thigh bone <laughs> <laughs> and this has nothing to do with the movie either it's no, just called no, like none. listen to this guy's story about a story that he heard about a story <laughs> yes yes <laughs> uh. This guy tells this long bucket story. They, they, what I love so much about this, when he starts to tell the story, Darren actually does the er, the, the Wonder Years thing where he's like, all right, so this is a little weird. What you're about to hear is a little far-fetched. I'm like, compared to the intestine biting thing? Right, and right. yes, it is. <laughs> and again, we have no proof, but. Right, obviously. At the end of it, he goes, what do you do with a story like that? I'm like, well, not included in your documentary. Uh, that's yeah. for sure. <laughs> it's that Christian kink, man. It's like, let's talk about other religions and the disgusting things they do that we just happen to hear of. Yeah, right. Like you guys eat your God. You know, can you imagine I'd like the Buddhist equivalent documentary here? Right. Let's drink some blood. Yeah. 
I love the, the last line of that bit is he's like, should we write this guy off as a lunatic? And and me and Eli just wrote, well, obviously. That would be- yeah. <laughs> Did, Did you, you not hear, hear his story just, about piling Sam? your own body while you accompany yourself on a flute made of bone? <laughs> Picture that, Darren. <laughs> hey, Darren. Hey, Darren. Who would have told someone about that? A bouncing head with a flute in its mouth? <laughs> you guys never believe what I just did. Oh, well, my God. A bouncing I did the craziest- bottom of a head anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> All right, well, this movie's already asking for our advice, and I've got nothing. So we're going to take a quick break, study up for the pop quiz, I guess. But we're back in a flash with even more Furious Love. So tell me a little bit about your ministry. You know, man, I look at the church today, and there's so much fiddle-faddle, you know? Laws this and the Bible that. But for me, for me, man, for me, though, it's about love. Lovely. And what do you mean by love? Oh, man, feeding the hungry, hugging a child, building a doghouse for a three-legged puppy. That's God's love right there. So God's love is actionable, nice things that not only don't require religion, but are actively hindered by it. Um, putting soup in a bowl. That's God's love right there. Uh, th- that bowl ain't full of soup. It's full of Jesus. Right, right, right. Let me try it this way. Can you name something religion does that a secular charity couldn't do with open books? A wet washcloth on a hot afternoon. Is that your answer, or are you just trying to list more things that are God's love? Yes. Let's pivot. Let's say someone gives someone a bowl of soup just, you know, to be nice, and they're not a Christian. What happens when they die? They burn in the lake of fire forever. And what happens if someone doesn't give out soup or in fact ever help anyone in their lives, but does believe in Jesus? They go to heaven. Right. So if anything, religion makes charity an extremely dangerous wager. I'm the best kind of Christian. Not the brag you think it is, but but yes, you are. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown and we're going to rejoin our documentarian interviewing Angela Greenig, Satan Wrangler. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, is it Christian to make your whole career and your business of getting money off of Satan? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. It, interesting. Right. Yeah. No. <laughs> At a certain point, he becomes a co worker, right? Like, right. How we yeah. were a little sad when yeah. Pat Robertson died, right? Because he was such a content generator for us. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> yeah, I right. Right. <laughs> Yeah, she's like, you know, let me tell you a story about a girl that I led out of Satanism, and I wrote my notes. I bet this story is very true and believable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And and very coherent. Oh, yeah. That's what I want to add. (laughs) I had to watch it two or three times, and that was uncomfortable and very hard. What is this? I'm ready for you guys to explain it to me. Please break it down. Sure. So so we're getting the story from two different sources, so you know it's true. Okay. From the woman who, you know, kicked Satan out of the possessed satanic girl and from the satanic girl herself, whose whose face, by the way, has been blurred out so that Satan won't know she's the one that told <laughs> I no no fucking. Right. Idea. Yeah, no, you don't you don't want Satan to come in on it. And look, we should be clear here that the girl talking, the one whose face is blurred, she has obviously been through some pretty bad abuse. Uh, mm-hmm. It is very obvious that she was addicted to drugs at one point and was probably given drugs as a part of the abuse. We have a tremendous amount of empathy for her. Who we don't have a tremendous amount of empathy for is the lady who introduces her by saying, I had never seen a child so chock full of Satan in my life. Yes. Yep. <laughs> Bubbling up around the eyeballs, he was. <laughs> yeah. She tells us about the the formerly satanic girl tells us about the time that she had to have sex with Satan. She says he appeared in the form of a Spanish prince. And then we watch like in real time where she goes, or, you know what, maybe I just fucked a Spanish guy. Could have been a Spanish guy. Now that I think about it, could have been a Spanish man. And I'm like, count me in. I'm sorry, Spanish friends too? Where? Well, she was like, you know, and he was not, he was pretty, he wasn't on the hot, right? <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is if, if he's out there and he wants another girl, I'm clean now. And That's you know. right. Mm-hmm. Yes. But yeah, but so, but she wanted out of Satanism 
So she went to Angela, to this to this church or this mission or whatever that Angela was running. And Angela tells us the story of her like, well, first of all, she shows up at the door very like satanically and she uses her telekinesis power to throw the door open. Right. right. We love a dramatic entrance. Because if, if you're going to use your powers, that's the thing. Yes. A, a door that already opens, make it open. Right. No, absolutely. Not you a wall. We're just got gotcha. Show off a little bit. She goes, so I took my last dosage of heroin. I'm like, no, you didn't. I'm sorry. Ding, I think like, if, if I said, and then I snuffed out my last marijuana cigarette, you'd know something was up, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. When she said the heroin thing, I just wrote in my notes, ah, yes, heroin, that drug known for making a person both good at memory and reliable in their story. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> and I'll tell you what else it does. It makes people throw open fucking doors. With their yeah. telekinesis yeah. powers. Of course. Yes, yeah. exactly, yeah. obviously. So, but she did that. She threw the thing open and, and Angela took one look at her. She had no, there was no white in her eyes. Her eyes were all black because all of the Satan and she says, oh, I, this is an actual quote. She says, I don't think so, babe. As in, no using your Satan magic in this house. <laughs> that is my favorite biblical passage. <laughs> that she is fighting yeah. Satan with, I don't think so, babe. <laughs> no, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Dirty, hairy of, you know, satanic <laughs> exercising people. Of course, yeah. Yes. Yeah, and then she and then she's like, and normally it takes a long time to unsatan a girl who's that far. But it only took about twenty minutes in this instance. <laughs> which is pretty, pretty much, we gave her the speed. Satan treatment. light. Yeah, it's actually kind of anticlimactic, right? She's right. like, there she was, filled with Satan, the fifth bride of the fallen sort of Anton Levey's <laughs> bloodline, and like, I would say an episode of Everybody Loves Raymond. Later, she was completely yeah, she fine, was fine. She so. was fine. It was nice. Didn't miss lunch. Didn't miss <laughs> she, lunch. <laughs> <laughs> she went to eat it. I don't think so, babe. Yeah, That's right. I'm right. going to use that on everything. Fuck yeah. Why would you not? So yeah, but she, but she says like, and after that, I had to fill her up with Jesus's love because once you empty out the demons, there's this big, there's a hole there, and you got to fill it mm-hmm. with something. So she filled her up with Jesus's love. They went out. The Satanists were like left and right trying to abduct her every time they turned around, which just in my mind is comical. I mean, I know that it there's like a way that it isn't, but you know, they failed a lot. So it, you got to right. imagine there was some comical there. And if they wanted to take this series, they, they they could have not prefaced the story with and none of my friends believed me. No one believed me <laughs> yeah. except for the maker of this movie. Yes, right. <laughs> right. Right. She said I lost a lot of friends with this and I'm like, "Of course you did." I don't want to be your friend. Yeah. I have the fifth bride of Anton LaVey's, da, 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 da. And I'm wondering when they say that she couldn't go anywhere without being kidnapped, if it was just her family saying, hey, come on home. Oh, wow. Samantha. Because I assume they think everyone in Anton LaVey's, you know, family is satanic, obviously. So is that what they meant? Yeah. Like, hey, it's Thanksgiving. Yeah, who knows? My- <laughs> I, I, come on home. You bring the potatoes. Is that? What they mean by the trying to kidnap her? My, they were just lying about this shit explanation is way less depressing. <laughs> so I'm going with that one. <laughs> okay. Also, so, and, and he says to us at this point, Darren, the, the narrator says, and look, she has nothing to gain from this. She's not trying to sell a book or get more talks at events or whatever. And I'm like, well, I mean, she probably would sell a book if anybody was interested. But no, look, just look, she's getting attention. She's getting validation. She's probably mentally ill. She's like, she's getting an alternative to probably an abusive situation. She's got a ton to gain out of this. That's such a stupid fucking line. She's a part of your movie, Darren. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. But when she said, and this happens with everyone and Satanism or, you know, adrenochrome or whatever the hell people want to believe. She said, You know, she saw children sacrificed. Yeah. When are people going to call the police? If someone told you that, wouldn't you just be like, oh, that's terrible. I'm going to get demons out of you. Then we're going to just call 911. Right. Right. You're going to tell me where it is. As opposed to going on a book tour. Right. Yeah. Right. Or being in a documentary that 11 people (laughs) watch, including us. Yeah. (laughs) No. And then fucking J.P. Moreland cuts back in to tell us that that. Western churches need to up their anti-demon game, damn it. 
Yeah, he's a, oh, I thought you were going to say he won a pool a pool match. Um, yeah. He's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says, have you ever noticed that all the other countries that don't have robust psychiatric care know that this stuff is demons and we don't, huh? Yeah, how weird is that, right? Mm. And then, as though he's doing my job for me, he goes, people in the third world have a lot more of a biblical worldview. And I was like, that is true, man. They do. <laughs> how do you feel about that sentence? <laughs> So and then we go back to uh, Mantofa, who explains to us that the you know it's really the the Western Church's fault for not recognizing Jesus's demon slaying potential, mm -hmm. right? And he's like, but then God did something that would literally change. Darren, the narrator, cuts in. He goes, did God did something that would literally change everything? And after that enormous setup, I don't know what he meant, right? Because just the documentary just keeps going. Nothing particular happens then. Well. The stakes he sets up are insane here, right? Because what he has showed us so far, according to his movie, is demon-filled people in Tanzania, mm -hmm. the self-munching monks of Tibet, <laughs> the <laughs> fucking heroin satanic cult, you know, kidnappers of the deep state. And now he's going to go fight... My wife's goth friends. Yes, right. He goes to an <laughs> occult and witchcraft festival in Salem, Massachusetts. And 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 as though that's not already disappointing enough, he says, and I came there ready to pick a fight. But he never does. He never does. And what the hell is a fight? So that's it. This like all these sort of young Theo bros are so taken with like military verbiage. Like I'm bringing my sword of faith. I'm yes. going to fight. I'm like... Put you on a real battlefield and we've got <laughs> oh, a problem. Put this guy on a real battlefield. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Against a demon with a sword. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yeah, no. That's what I would. It's the only thing I want in life. By the way, I love Theo bros. I'm, 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 I'm keeping that one. 10%. But I also like keep in mind, every time anyone ever tells you that atheists are too pushy, Right. Just remember this moment. I have never met an atheist that showed up at a church in his own words, ready nope. to pick a fight. <laughs> right. Yeah. Nope. I mean, I would, but, but Noah said no. The <laughs> point is that Noah have, said but. no. <laughs> and there's, you know, we don't want to tell him, but we're sort of lazy asses. Yeah. No, yeah, well, that's that's that yeah we're <laughs> fine. We're fine. But like he then does this crowd shot, right? He set up these epic stakes ready to go to battle. And then it's it's just a bunch of golf kids. Like I can't describe how low stakes it is when he's like, bum, 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 and someone's just like, yeah, so we're going to the My Immortal concert later. And then <laughs> we're meeting with Elastor and Stephanie for chicken wings. And he's like, here lies Satan's darkest yes. workers. Well, but he can't do this one alone, damn it. He's going to need to call in the Robin to his is Batman, god damn it. Jason Westerfield is back. <laughs> now, of course, Gary, you didn't watch the first one of this way, but there's a huge part of the first movie that is just this guy failing to heal someone's leg for like 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. So they repeated it in this <laughs> yes. one? Yeah, so no, they, they really. Just a little quicker this time. Were they like, Karen hasn't seen it. Let's put it in this second movie. Yep. And this is great because he because he can't do it right because his whole thing is nonsense and unless somebody really wants you to be right you're not right but the excuse they use is they're like well yes of course Jason's healing powers that usually by the way are fucking awesome when he uses them <laughs> on people from Canada that you don't know they didn't work because it's an occult festival and Satan's all over the place here. Bam, bam. Mm. it's like Duh. Satan that's what I was thinking this movie is like Satan is a driving car. It just goes by itself. Yes. Right. For God, we people need to get in and pedal and then just, you know, God needs people. Oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. God can't pee when you're looking, but Satan <laughs> runs several world governments. <laughs> right. 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 That's absolutely <laughs> it. And the spiritual readings, I want to talk about that when you guys get there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Because he's like, but nobody would fight with us because it turns out that they were just a bunch of goth kids that were about to meet fucking asbestos for chicken wings or whatever, you know. <laughs> and so and so we tricked them. We lured him in. We put up his, and, and, and they act like they just came up with this idea at the last second. They're like, we, we offer free spiritual readings for which we just happened to have a, um, 
a sign that we bought. (laughs) (laughs) And cursive. So, like, this is a big trend in the last 10 years, is people going, Christians going to these festivals and setting up booths that says spiritual readings, but they're really doing praying and God stuff. And they even bring those angel cards and say, we'll read your cards. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, it's a big thing. They're trying to, you know, impact all the satanic stuff for Jesus. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so we're just watching them glom onto that con. That's awesome. Yeah. Listen, Christians are original. They're just late. They're just after, <laughs> it just, you know. Yeah. And, and of course, but then what they show us, and again, they're accidentally showing us how bullshit this is. Once they started calling it spiritual readings, Jason's con worked because now the people wanted to validate his beliefs. So they're like, yeah, my leg does feel better. Right? (laughs) I want someone to go, my dick hurts. That's what I want. I want to see laying on of hands. Look, the day Jason and I are in the same room at the same time (laughs) is the best day of my life. He's a cutie. He's a cutie. Sure, he's a cutie. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's great. So, yeah, so we watch him heal some people with his fucking Jesus powers. And then we pause for a, a quick bit from Pastor Phil Wyman. He's a guy who goes out and ministers regularly to all the poor demonic souls in Salem, right? What a huge waste of life. Like, I, I look, I don't like to tell anybody that they have made bad choices in their existence, but imagine bothering people for Jesus in Salem, Mass. Of all the, <laughs> right? That's like being like a German pride ambassador just outside of Warsaw. You know, like there's times <laughs> and places that maybe your message isn't going to be met as well. Uh, well, but also let's just stop for a second and consider how they would feel if if this was going the other way, right? Because what they're saying is like, it, it, this is the equivalent of, well, we set up a big Christian festival and a bunch of witches showed up and tried to change everybody's religion to neo-pagan, right? They'd be furious about something like that. Right, right. they'd lose their minds. Yeah, but they cannot see it if it goes the other way. Yeah, it's non-consent. Yes. It's the, I'll pray for you. No, thank you, I'm an atheist. I'm still gonna pray for you. Yes. I'm gonna pray for you extra now. It's the absolute no consent. <laughs> But then there's this great fucking moment where he's like, but, you know, everything was going great. I was healing people. Jason was healing people left and right. But then he may have met his match. And it just shows four 19-year-old black guys. Right. Right. Like the most terrifying thing these two kids could think of. Right. But it definitely, let's be clear, the moment definitely plays as, and then he met his match. Black people. Exactly. Right, right. right. I see darkness. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Now, one of them's wearing a red hooded cloak, though. So he's like a satanic and black. So that's like a double whammy. Can we pause for a second and acknowledge how amazing those friends are? Because that group of friends very clearly has one fucking weirdo. And he was <laughs> like, guys, I journey into the heart of darkness this weekend to see what Satan has to offer a disciple like me. And they were like, yeah, man, you want us to come with you on your trip to yes, Satan? Is yes, there, they totally you did. Airbnb? One great guy is so... Because the other three, not enjoying themselves. Nope. Not having <laughs> a good time. They were not. And they were being super nice. He came out of his room in his little Red Riding Hood cloak and they were like, God damn it, Terrence. Red Riding Hood, that's it. Terrence, you didn't tell us you were going to wear a costume. And he's like, it's not a costume. It's a holy sacrimonial robe. It's your mom's. It's your mom's is what it is. <laughs> We've seen her wear it, <laughs> Terrence. That's what I thought. Like, that is definitely a Red Riding Hood little cloak there. Yes. Very polyester, not breathing material. <laughs> and no, you know, they make a big deal when he takes it off his head. Yes. But if you've ever had polyester on your head, you're taking that off. Yeah, right, right. No, that was bound to happen. I love my favorite moment here is Jason's telling one of the friends, you know, Jesus is looking over you now and he says, and he's protecting you. There are angels all around you, but not like little fucking sissy cherubs, like big brawny angels with swords, big, yeah. manly angels. I was really worried he was going to do a black voice for the angels. Weren't you? He was like, <laughs> and the angels are all like, hey, the- nope, nope. Okay. I heard it. I heard it. 
But yeah, so but but after all this considerable buildup, you know, we're gonna pick a fight, we're gonna go to the blood, and this guy is so satanic. Let's just look at his red riding hood cloak. After all of that, they talk to this guy, and this guy in the red riding hood cloak could not be more respectful of their beliefs. Absolutely. Right. He's just he he listens intently. He asks good questions. When they go to pray for him, he's like, "Well, let me uncover my head because you know I, I know that's meaningful to you, and I'm trying to be respectful and shit." And of course, the movie plays it like even the Satan got him. knew to uncover his head before <laughs> Jesus nailed it. Now, don't leave out that he's slow mode again. Yes, the yes, time yes. that it takes the guy to unveil his head to take off that is just like. You know, the seas have parted. Yes, Miracles exactly. have been done. As though he was going to reveal horns. <laughs> right. Yeah. And we should also point out how two-faced this is, because if you listen to what Jason's saying, he's saying, I pray for healing, I pay, pray for grace and rest and peace, right? And this young guy who uncovers his head, he doesn't know that it's going to be played as like a, yeah, we fucking got him moment. But like, that's right. right. That's the level this movie needs to stoop to is we made a dude take off his hood. Yes. Mm hmm. Right. And I'm just saying, Darren, I can. we're all going to be in the same city relatively soon. If you would like to <laughs> test Jason's powers, I'm pretty sure we'll fly you out. You can test it for a week and my, a half. My dick does hurt, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. It's, uh, I'm coming. I'll tell you that. So. And I'm going to write Darren, you know, hey, boobs are in this city at this exactly. time. And yeah, right. the camera out. <laughs> Trigger warning. Yeah. Not my boobs. Graphic imagery. Yeah, right. I'll get some youngins. So then we so then we meet Jan Pasterkamp. He's a he's a pastor. His name is Pasterkamp. I just noticed that from the Netherlands. He says, I wrote my thesis on spiritual warfare. And I'm like, oh, could, then you must know a little something about it. OK, fine. I'll be the problematic one. Here's all I'm going to say. If I had a lisp as heavy as Jan Sjord Pasterkamp, <laughs> I would not have specialized in something with an S in the title. OK, <laughs> Dude. It's god awful movies, not god awful shimmeras for a reason. That's all I'm saying. Okay, this guy, you could fill a bucket by the end of his interview. Okay. And why didn't God heal that? But yeah, I exactly. Also, yeah, get get a little on that. Yeah, I want to see the accreditation papers of this college. <laughs> that he wrote a thesis. A there are angels war. and devils, and you can't see any of this. No, but I'm going to get a master's <laughs> and what? Yeah, right. So and and then he's like, you know, and I and I learned in my 30 years of studying absolutely nothing <laughs> that the greatest weapon against the devil is love. And I'm like, wow, so you spent your whole life learning about a thing that doesn't exist so that you could come out at your elderly fucking age now with nothing more than a banality that is so banal you wouldn't bother to embroider it on a fucking pillow yeah you're you're just you're one level below live laugh love with this <laughs> bullshit and look i mean in his defense this dude's in the netherlands where like in 2014 there were more atheists than theists in the yeah, netherlands right. like this dude is he fucking ah oh, it's the worst it's just, and he's just, just love he's just, just living in the worst possible arguments against his religion right yeah because he's like oh no my friends tell me about kenya and all these super religious countries like America where things are terrible and I'm here in <laughs> tulip paradise where mm -hmm. the occasional stoned foreigner falls into the canal trying to turn everybody to Christ. <laughs> and he looks so loving. I mean, he just looks like someone I would not be worried about approaching. And dear listener, I am lying. Like, it's just some white dude. No, like, this guy is offering you a melty candy bar, yes. Yeah, that, no question. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And then we cut back to Chris from Bethel Church. Now, this moment is just incredible. This Maybe my favorite moment in the movie. First of all, the, we, when we cut back to him, he's clearly on the verge of tears talking about his great love for Jesus. But then he starts explaining God. As the in the rapiest fucking stalkeriest ass way possible. Mm -hmm. I want to pepper. I wrote in my notes. I'm going to learn karate and kick God into a glass table in Act Three. I know how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting pepper spray for everyone. Right, exactly. Let's pepper and spray God. Absolutely. It was. We need a man to read it, and I want you to uh, read it with all the cringiest you know, pedo, gross 
attack rapey <laughs> vibe you can, he goes, please. He goes, God won't let you walk away from him. And I'm like, oh, he's like a fucking street gang. And then he starts going, <laughs> God will say to you, I'm the bridegroom. You're the bride. I'm the pursuer. I'm the male. This is an exact quote. Exact I'm quote. I'm the exact male quote. in this relationship. And you can play hard to get, but you'll be amazed by how hard it's going to be to not love me. Yeah, and then Michael J. Fox is going to throw up in the car door and punch God in the <laughs> face. I've seen this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I'm just like, we need a restraining order on this guy from everyone. Right. And God. Yes. Wait, what happened to the free will? Isn't it free will? So now God's pursuing you down every little, you know, pathway you go and you can't say no to him. Yeah. Also, what the fuck is I'm the male in this relationship? What does that mean to you, Chris? Mm. Yeah. Jesus. So, okay. And then Darren shifts from people who actively hate God to people who just don't give a fuck. This is where he decides to travel to the very, <laughs> in his words, the very heart of the sex trade in Thailand. Here we go. On on his Kickstarter supporters die. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Also, just want to throw this out there. I've got some bad news for Darren about the heart of the sex trade. Spoiler alert, Darren. It's not Thailand. It's not. <laughs> so, it's not Thailand. Well, yeah. And, and he's like, you know, I went with my friend Will and it was so amazing how well he knew the city. You know, he just knew all these little shortcuts to get us around and he knew all the people to talk to. Okay. That actually brings me to my next things because if you haven't been to Bangkok, he's like, oh yeah, and we drove by all these sex workers. But if you have been to Bangkok, you know how purposefully you had to drive to the red light district <laughs> to see this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> He goes, you know, I, I figured if anything was going to put God's love to the test, it would be, the, again, his words, sexual deviance and child molestation. Mm -hmm. So he's equating like, you know, sex work and child molestation as, as like equally immoral things. Right. 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 Also, by the way, fucking the fact that child molestation even exists, huge argument against the existence of your God and your God's love. Right. Right. Bam. Right. But anyway, he's come all the way to Thailand. So obviously he's going to talk to a white lady who's there, <laughs> right? To get a lay of the land. <laughs> yes, because Lord knows what the genuinely oppressed sex workers of Thailand need is a white lady to lecture them about their spiritual health. Yes. And then kidnap them to work in her jewelry factory. Right. Right. They're like, yeah, you know, we try to get them out of sex work and into a much lower paying job that we profit from. I couldn't. I looked this up and it is 100 percent that oh, they shit. literally. First of all, many of the way they got criticized, they apparently pay them now. But, you know, it's a 5013C, so we'll fucking say it. Yeah, right. But like this charity has already been given several like humanitarian dings because they trade people work for their fucking jewelry work. Like they right. get to live in yes. a house and extreme, you know, uh, indentured servitude. So yeah. Yes, wow. exactly. Exactly. But yeah, but we, and we hear from some of the former sex workers that they've white saviored. Right. Yeah. This one chick is like, you know, I, I got up and I went to work at 5 AM and I worked until 2 AM and I'm like, wow, <laughs> that's, I don't, I don't know how, how long you can keep that up. That's so, but she, but she tells us, you know, that the powers of darkness are very strong here in, in Thailand. But Jesus, though, is more powerful. It's still, even though a lot of kids get raped. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, really? Is he doing? It seems like he's losing by like a large yes. mark. This is like a, this is like a 2020 election situation <laughs> to me. You know, like, a bit of a landslide. Yeah. So then, okay. So then he interviews this guy. He's like, so then, you know, I, I, I started talking to some of the people who travel to Thailand to partake in their sex trade. And I thought I was really going to hate these people, but it turned out that I didn't. And he starts interviewing them. And the whole time we're like, why didn't you hate this man? Yes. You should absolutely hate this man with every fiber of your being. Yes. The uh, kid fucking is going to happen, guy. Yes. Wow. Right. He goes like, well, what, but what about like, how do you justify the morality? Because, you know, there's a lot of children that are sex trafficked here. And he goes, yeah, it's part of their culture. 
And I'm like, this is the guy you didn't find a reason to hate? (laughs) And that's what, when he's saying like, oh, this whole place, you know, Satan and demons are all over here. Is Satan and demons all over there or Western tourists all over there? Right. Because they're the ones interesting doing it, coming from a lot of Christian nations. But this is when I get to tell you, yes, I was a missionary in Thailand. (gasps) So absolutely know all these streets. I did not hire anyone to make jewelry, however. (laughs) I'd like to go back in time. We're very proud of you, Karen. We're glad to hear that. I mean, I could have like had a whole jade jewelry import export. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. You could be a millionaire by now. Would would it really help some people? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, because that's what that's what white missionaries do. They really help people. Oh yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Well, especially in Thailand. Yeah. So and and then we he gets to sort of his conclusion because he talks to a couple of different guys and he says, but ultimately I couldn't hate these people because they're just looking for love. No. Uh, No. Darren. um, Darren. E. (laughs) And if they only had the love of God, they wouldn't rape children Uh, for money. Right. They wouldn't at best shrug their shoulders at child rape and at accurately rape children for money. Right. And again, Uh, I just want to pause here, right? Because if the whole movie was like, we talk to the worst people in the world and Jesus loves them anyways, right? He just did a watch this black guy take off his hood at the Lord's might, right? Right. He constantly called the black guy a vessel of Satan because he was wearing his grandmother's Mumu to a gothic <laughs> festival. And now this guy is like, look, pedophilia is going to happen. It's about whether or not you're getting a good price for it. And he's like, yeah. this man needs the love of Christ and the gentleness <laughs> yeah, of a hug. He's all right. <laughs> so, yeah. And also, there's this montage of shots where he's just like, well, and, and, the, and there was so much sin, and I had to go into a an awful lot of strip clubs to get all of this montage of <laughs> sin, all of these brothels I had to visit to see all the sin. I had to. And then he and then he goes like, and my friend Will, who's a, a pastor who works, a, a missionary who stays out here quite a bit, he told us there was a, a city with even more prostitutes. So we went there. <laughs> so, yeah. Which, by the way, like, again, Karen, you, you were also in Thailand, so you know this. His center of prostitution is Pattaya. Yeah. Which is like, it's such a weird thing to say. That would be like, and now it's time to go to America's center of prostitution. Myrtle Beach. Boston, Massachusetts. Yeah, Milwaukee. Yeah, right. (laughs) Right. He describes this as the the fucking Akahabara of sex work. But yeah, no, it's apparently not accurate, huh? I think he just wanted to go to the beach, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a beach town. Like, it's it's so crazy to describe Mm -hmm. This is the Mecca of prostitution. <laughs> this guy's doing a, the the good vacation situations, what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Right. So we see the two of them walking around town. Now, they've hired a couple of interpreters. To, well, they've hired a couple of sex workers to work as interpreters. Yes, mm-hmm. this guy <laughs> and his friend each have a sex worker that they're walking <sighs> around holding hands with, you know, for Jesus. And then we get to, I'm going to say the most uncomfortable I was in the entire movie. Mm. This is where Will tells us about Jesusing the transness out of a trans woman, I think. Mm. I, uh-huh, okay, uh-huh. but he doesn't use trans or transness. No. He uses something which Google says is sometimes a slur, so I'm going to go ahead and not use it. But I am going to tell you that it is very clearly a porn search term, okay? <laughs> yes. The reason Will knows this term is because it's how you search for porn with trans women in it. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. And it's just like these people are the pinnacle. Like, we've found one. Right. This yes. is the large bass in the fishing tournament. <laughs> like, yes, it's, exactly. It's, <laughs> we found a triple double sinner. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and, and he even says during the story, he's like, I don't know what, you know, he goes, he's t- he's telling us the story, and he goes, and then she say, he said, I don't know what pronoun to use, so I'll use both so I make sure I to get that I get it wrong, right? Right, yeah. And the very first thing that this trans sex worker tells him is she's like, oh, no, these uh, scars all over my body are from people with your beliefs that physically attacked me. And he's like, mm-hmm. Right. Anyway, so I'm going to pray for your back pain. Your back pain. Um, 
these were my favorite two sentences when he was like, all of a sudden, I find myself with either the trans person or the bartender. I can't remember. And the guy said, quote, I saw this was a God appointment. So I ordered a Coke. That's going to be on T-shirts. <laughs> a God appointment. I started wondering, does God like just... Like for Christians, does he put like a purple diamond above them to indicate an available side right, quest exact or something? Sign. Hello, Trevor. <laughs> if someone makes eye contact, it's a God appointment. Yes. You have to kill this many weasels and bring them back to the trans sex worker. She'll get you a really cool helmet. Right, right. No, it's got to get the 14 herbs. So yeah, but but then, it, and this is so fucking funny because so Will starts telling us these stories of miraculous healings that he was doing at this bar, but like, they had a camera at the bar. Show, ex- right. Hallelujah. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> Show me the photos. He's very clearly being humor. Like, imagine the kindness in the heart of these sex workers that this white Western piece of shit wannabe savior comes into your bar, buys a soda, fuck him, mm-hmm. and then is like, all right, everybody line up for your healings. And you're such a nice person that you play along and don't, for example, kick his ass. Right. And you think it's like the Hooters ladies smiling at guys. Yes, you yes know, exactly. She's your waitress. But also, you think that these sex workers haven't heard this same lead-in before they're getting paid to do something in a hotel? Right. They've heard all this. Right. And many times it leads right down, you know. Probably from Will. <laughs> <laughs> Will. Yeah. <laughs> so. Oh, guys, Will brought one of his friends. He's going to do some magic. You know, it's just, you know, he's not even going to touch you. So it's fine. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's Will again. Well, I'll tell you what, the trans story was as much rampant bigotry as I can take in a single sitting. So we're going to take another quick break. But first, I'm going to give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Darren trek into the jungles of the Congo and face the true horrors of war? Will he face down danger to document the gruesome mistreatment of persecuted Christians there? Will he instead sit in a comfortable cafe in Amsterdam while some other white guy tells him about that stuff? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the unfathomably gullible conclusion of Furious Love. Tyler, Tyler, get in here. Yes, Mr. God. Uh, 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 who's this? Who's this? Oh, this, uh, this is Karen. Hi. What? How did she get promoted to heaven? Oh, she made atheist content on TikTok. Uh, yikes. You earned it, lady. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, anyway, so you, you wanted to see us, sir? Oh, right. So you know how Satan has the souls of literally millions of Wiccans and pagans and demon worshipers? Yes, sir. I, I still think it's really weird that you allow that. Okay. Well, not today, I don't, because we're sending in Jason. <laughs> like from the horror movies? Uh, no, I love that idea, though. No, the the healer guy? The one whose magic looks exactly like somebody doing a bad card trick, that Jason? That is the one. That is, yep, that's him. Send him in there. I want him to do the Sir, thing. he's the Holy War version of saying, bless you after someone sneezes. Yeah, he makes you look silly. Hey, hey, guys, what do I always say? If your God powers didn't look exactly like what people faking it would look like, it doesn't count. Exactly. Thank you. Hey, Karen, before you go. Yep. What's up? Did you ever do that NPC trend? You know, like, thanks for the glizzy. Thanks for the glizzy. (laughs) Uh, No, sir. Those are for people in the other place. No, that tracks. (laughs) (laughs) And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with talking head Gregory or George, I guess, once more explaining how the church needs to be more like Darren. And before you dismiss this guy, I should explain that he has a very large number of books behind him. So there's only so stupid yeah, yeah. he could possibly be. Right. 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 And he, I love how this dude gets lost in his metaphor here. He's like, people don't understand. Truth isn't a teaching. It's a person. And that person is a ghost. And that ghost <laughs> is a segue. And that segue. Travel- <laughs> God, oh, I lost it. I lost it. Shit. Yeah. Truth is not a teaching. It's a person. And I'm just like, no, dude, we already have, like, truth is already doing other shit. You guys can't use that and make a person of it. We're, we need that word. You can't call dibs on other stuff. You have a religion. Be your right. religion. Yeah. But then Darren's like, so, but meanwhile, so we left Thailand and uh, 
went to the red light district in Amsterdam. <laughs> Convenient. That didn't provide nearly as good coverage because of, you know, the legalization movement making prostitution in Amsterdam not only a viable but often safe and profitable profession for people and of all ages and genders. But um, <laughs> I swear I have a friend who doesn't like it. I do have one friend yes. who doesn't <laughs> like it. Well, you know, like there are people in jobs who don't like their jobs. You can right, be a cashier yeah. and be like, I had to take this job. But I mean, these people abuse me. I want to quit. But he finds one woman who's like, I'm done doing this, but I can't leave because because I need the money. Right. Like, hey, me too. I'm watching Darren's <laughs> movie for a living, right? I'd love to not do this anymore. I'm right. on your fucking <laughs> podcast. We do things we don't want to do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And like, hey, not for nothing, lady, but you're probably a citizen of Amsterdam, which means you have like free health care and shit. If Noah doesn't show up and talk about d fucking Darren's goatee, you know, he's in a lot more financial risk than you are. <laughs> right. Yeah, no shit. And you know she charged him to talk to him. Oh, for That's sure. That's how it works. Yeah. Let's let's be honest. She charged him for something else before that. Right. right? Yeah, yeah, no. Will, Will gave her the good race. Yeah. yeah. But then he's like, we, we meet this guy, Fritz. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the last name there. Nope, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. He's from the Blood and Fire Ministries. And they try to like talk sex workers into like less profitable jewelry making professions or whatever, right? For a living. And he's like, you know, look, what, what I do is I listen to people. It doesn't take a lot of training to just say hi and listen to people. And I'm like, yeah, man, it doesn't take any expertise to do what you do. What's your point? <laughs> right. Do you want to start a? Are you asking for a podcast recommendation? So it right. really doesn't matter what mic you have, man. That's the first thing we always tell people. <laughs> What's so? But again, like this dude is a sex work outreach activist in Amsterdam, the best place to be a sex worker in the world. Right. Right. That's like me being like, I um. I went to the worst place for pizza in the world, New York City, to <laughs> right. try and reach people with Detroit style pizza. All right, Detroit can... style pizza is fucking awesome. But yeah, yeah, no, that's, the joke still works. The joke still works. And we also we also meet Matthias Vanderstein, and I bless his heart, but he doesn't he doesn't speak English well enough to communicate a thought with it. Right. I have no idea what he was trying to say. I, I, these all are blended. Yeah, no, they're really all. I don't together. even remember which one this one is. All right. So let's move away from there for a second. This is the first time he chickens out. This is where we're going to meet Shanti. Right. So Shanti is a Christian in India mm -hmm. where Christians are very often very genuinely persecuted. And, and she's going to tell us the story about persecution in India. First, we have like a, he traveled to India not to the part where they're persecuting Christians, mind you, but right. he did travel there. So we see him at like a Hindu temple and he just has this long moment of, look how gross their religion is. It looks so gross and evil, right? Yeah. And that bothered me. It's so funny. He's poking at the statues of Kali and he's like, God, the darkness and horribleness here. Oh, look, that's where Mother Teresa tortured children to death. Anyways, yes. back to the darkness yeah. of yeah. the temple. <laughs> And he's he's laughing at I've never seen anything more crazy. And it was just a custom of their religion. Yeah. Well, you come here and people are like, eat Jesus's body, drink his blood. Look at the right. scars in his hands as he's naked on a cross in front of children. <laughs> exactly. How how <laughs> culturally purposefully ignorant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Exactly, That's yeah. just the thing. Well, and then he's like, and then they sacrificed a goat and I just couldn't even imagine something so evil. And I'm like, That's because you haven't read your book. <laughs> your exactly. fucking book. The whole first half of that book is all goat sacrifice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Also, like, let's be clear, your thing is that you magically transform stuff into body and blood sacrifices. Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. at least they have the, the courage of their convictions. Well, and also your explanation for why you don't sacrifice animals anymore is that you sacrificed a human that was so good he made up for it. Right. right. Although you still have to jump through hoops. So what did it do? But well, anyway, yeah, yeah, still, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But then he's like, you know, here in India, a lot of Christians are massacred. You don't hear about it on the media, of course. Well, then how do you know about it, man? 
But he's like, and we were totally going to go to one of those places where that was happening, but the trains were like all fucked up. Uh, it was a train. <laughs> so we couldn't go. So we just sent our camera to this lady who actually was brave enough to be there. And then she sent it back. She sent, and then she mails it back. And we, <laughs> I can't emphasize enough, we left her there. That's right. We stayed at the nice hotel. Yes. That I like to call Kickstarter Vacation. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I was a missionary in India too, guys. It is a difficult, hard place. So I don't, you know, long story short, God wanted to bless us. And so we all stayed in a fancy hotel. Oh, well, that was oh, nice. That's, yeah, no, that's important. Listen, I was that's right. You sacrifice. He wants to bless you. Yeah, no, I was going to say, like, when you were in India, did you find what they lacked was Christianity? Is that the th real thing that you saw missing in that yeah, society? Yeah, right, right. Well, when I was a Christian... That, that and access to clean water. Yeah. Right. right. There were, there's a few issues. Yeah, and, and look, so Shanti starts talking to us about, like, the again, the very genuine persecution that every minority religion faces mm -hmm. in India right now. And I'm like, yeah, man, religion sucks. Religion is there bad. You, right? you know who's not doing that to her is the fucking atheists. Right. Um, yeah. She keeps spinning the chamber of her Russian roulette rifle being like, I'm going to get the bullet that's good. Trust me, this is, there yeah. is a good bullet in here. <laughs> right, right. And at the very end of her fucking purse, and then everybody's house was burned down and people watched their parents murdered in front of them. But the next day was Christmas and we had a great time. We just, we like, I, she almost trots out Cindy Lou Who. <laughs> it's actually crazier than that because her friend calls her. Yes. Right? And she's like, yeah, no, my, my friends were just killed and they burned the village to the <laughs> ground and they tortured our church leader. And he's like, hey, on the upside. Yes. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it is Christmas today. You know, God probably wasn't helping you in your most dire time of need because he was getting ready for his kid's birthday. I know that's packed for me. Probably hanging up some stuff, you know, yeah. mm -hmm. some hats, getting a little hats. Getting some Doc McStuffins merch going, yeah. <laughs> and again, like, what is Darren doing? He didn't right. film it himself, as you said. Nope. And there's no like, here's a solution. Here, we're going to gather money. Nope. Hey, go to this website and let's help these people. It's just, <laughs> you know, look at this. I'm putting it in this film. Now we're going to go somewhere else. Well, and, and not only is he not going to raise money for him, but he's going to compete for that money, right? Because he's doing mm -hmm. a Kickstarter where Christians might otherwise have sent that money to starving people in India who are persecuted in the name of Christ or whatever. Yeah. Damn. So, and and speaking of not actually going there, we cut back to Amsterdam where we meet Daniel, <laughs> who ministered in the Congo, and he's going to tell us this story that veers wildly into his imagination. I'm pissed at Daniel. Daniel, right. call me. Also, can we just point out that they, they try to hide this, but they're like, Daniel, who was in the most dangerous part of Africa until... He had to be rescued by the UN. Um, so they like, used okay. a lot of resources that could have gone. I was going to say, yeah, yes. that, so, <laughs> that right there. It sounds like Daniel should have stayed the fuck out of that area of Africa. But instead of giving people the help they needed there, we were shipping Daniel back to Amsterdam so he could brag about this, like feeling a boob at summer camp. <laughs> yes, right. He goes, I was in the Congo. And the Congolese rebels, they are the most intensely violent group in the world, according to the U.N. Now, I could not find the U.N.'s fucking violence intensity rankings online. So I couldn't was find unable it. to couldn't find it. I was looking for it to most violent <laughs> rebels, according to U.N. And then look. I am sure that this this is a very hard part of the world to be in and rebels really do do some terrible shit. But if Daniel was hoping to get us with the gravitas of the situation, whacking a baby against the side of a bus was Jeez. not the image he was hoping for. Yeah. Well, especially because that just comes out after practically him going and then the rebels were like, pew, pew, and then I did a dive roll. Yeah so fucking dumb. He might as well take out a rubber chicken and slap it against the table with a completely serious... <laughs> like it was like this. It was like... <laughs> it was like this. It was very serious. Very important real thing I'm telling you about. And for people not getting a visual, this guy has white blonde surfer hair. Yes. Did he have a puka shell necklace? I don't... He's very <laughs> white. I think he just has an implied one. Yes. Right. He goes illegally 
to a place he shouldn't have been, that the government is saying, don't go here, and then yep. using all their resources to fucking get the white guy out so he can tell you. Yes, yes. And he tells us this terrible, harrowing tale, some of which may be true, right? I don't think a lot of it's true, but some of which may be true. And after he finishes, he's like, and after all that, you know what happened? <laughs> a guy gave me a pineapple. Great. <laughs> and, anyways, that's it. No, he goes, he goes, and uh, you know, this guy, he was so nice. He gave me the pineapple and he didn't even have anything to eat. He was starving. So, so I, I ate his pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> so I ate his fucking pineapple. And then the UN came and got me like it was a sleepover and I was home. Sweet. And I stared at him the whole fucking time. And I said, you're damn right. I'm eating the pineapple. <laughs> How do you not know you're the villain of history? How do you not know? These idiots would have recorded the concentration camps on their cell phone and then walked out talking about the fucking Holy Spirit. Just being like, oh no, trust me, some of those Jews were really feeling the love. I colonized that pineapple and I ate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then, so, and, and I love to, because Daniel's just finished telling us all these harrowing stories of dive rolls away from fucking rebels and everything. And he's like, and uh, actually, you know, he had a camera phone with him the whole time. So weird that he didn't get any footage of any of that, but he did capture audio of some people singing. So let's listen to that audio. And I'm such a good filmmaker that I will fail to even put a photograph of the guy what? under it. it. We will watch a black fucking screen for yep. 45 seconds while children sing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, you know, that guy only used his phone battery to look at his, you know, self in the camera right. for his hair while he was down there. So he couldn't even, he probably didn't even have the bandwidth oh, except that's probably for anything yeah. for audio. But why Darren didn't even put a picture of his, you know, chunky silver bracelet up on the screen for us to <laughs> look at or someone eating a pineapple or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I fast forwarded that part. So then we, we, we meet Robbie Dawkins of the Vineyard Church in Aurora, Illinois. I have him down as, as if Elijah Wood was a Christian biker and a gnome. Yes. Right? <laughs> yes. He would be Robbie Dawkins. I'd like to say. Double leather bracelets. Yeah. Yes. Double yes. On each yeah. Wrist. And the there soul you go. patch. You guys remember that South Park episode where Cartman tells them they can just make a Christian band by switching out the words of love yes. songs with the word <laughs> Jesus? <laughs> this interview would have been a little much for that episode. He might no, as well talk about shit. how he's going to lay Jesus down by the fire and do the alphabet with his tongue on his butt. <laughs> like, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> and to more describe this Robbie Dawkins guy, his church is the one that Dog the Bounty Hunter goes to when yes. he goes to church. Yes, obviously. Yes. And that did, you've got the visual. Yeah, right. Honestly. The leather bracelets. Dog. We didn't have to tell you what he looked like. You would have known from that. <laughs> so, so then Darren's like, well, so, you know, and I so I knew at this point that I was reaching the end of the movie because there's only so much money I can ask from <laughs> Kickstarter. So <laughs> I was, and he's like, I was, I was nearing the end of the journey. And I'm like, yeah, no man, I've been checking the bar at the bottom every 30 seconds too. I knew we were <laughs> towards the end, but before we get there, he has to go to Madrid, right? Cause that's lovely this time of year. Sure. Exactly. Yeah. Where, and, and while there, he's going to take us, we're going to follow these guys who minister at a city dump where all the heroin addicts go to shoot their heroin. Right, because right, they're going to be coherent and be able to hear it. It's going to be good, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, no. The people are exactly in the right frame of mind mm -hmm. to change their fundamental beliefs in that moment, yeah. And I think what we all agree, what heroin addicts need more than anything else is to be pressured into switching religions, right? Oh, like absolutely. That is really, in the middle mm -hmm. of their high, yes, exactly. So, yeah, so we follow these two guys, Jose and Manolo, they go out to minister to heroin addicts every day. They, strangely enough, they don't bring food or money or anything no. you know, helpful. You guys don't have shoes. They could bring shoes for some of these guys. But no, they don't do any of that. They just stand there and argue with them about Jesus. Right. right? At one point, they're like, you know, at one point, this guy OD'd. We were useless because despite the fact that these guys come every day, they don't have any training as to what to do when a person ODs. Luckily, though, the secular government provides 
medical personnel that are nearby. <laughs> yeah, right. he brags. He's like, and then we brought him to the free government medical bus. And when they were done with their real stuff, we bothered him about religion. Yes. And we had a great camera angle to capture it all. <laughs> what was, I'm assuming Darren did the, I'm holding it down by my side, pretending the camera's off. Yes. But yes. it's on. And you're just going to have to hold on to your own seasickness as you watch this guy preach at the heroin addict. And then they even turn off the sound and you see the preacher guy sort of yelling and arguing yeah. with the heroin addict. With a heroin addict that just OD'd and then did more heroin. Mm -hmm. And said, no, I don't want to become a Christian. Well, and that's the fucked up thing is that this guy over and over again is like, I don't want to change my life. I don't want to be your religion. He keeps saying, I deserve this. And, and Manolo's going like, nobody deserves to live like you. And I'm like, dude, in your religion, people deserve eternity and fucking hell. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Give me a goddamn break. You going with free will or not? Yeah. But yeah, they, and, and then at a certain point, they like browbeat this guy into praying with him and they're like, repeat after me. And he's like, anything to get you to leave. And then they get to the part where it's like, and I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. He's like, I don't want to do this. Please stop. Please go away. And eventually they go away. Well, and, and what's crazy is Darren freeze frames there and he's like, yep, I think we can all agree. It's really sad that that heroin addict was under the control of so many demons, right? Yes. I mean, that's the really <laughs> sad thing we've just witnessed here. <laughs> or this whole scene did not work the way I thought it was, but I'm putting it in anyway. Yeah. Do you think this is where the uh, Spanish prince came from? Oh, oh interesting. Yeah. Maybe, Maybe yeah. He, was, mm. he was Manolo. Connecting the multiverse. <laughs> but let's be clear about how victim blamey this shit is, right? Because like the point that he's trying to make here is like, look at this. This drug addict had an opportunity to get clean and get with Jesus and everything would have been fine in his life. But he didn't want to accept Christ as his Lord and Savior. And so he didn't he's forced to still be a drug addict. Yeah. Right. Like no acknowledgement of the fact that, no, this isn't actually going to help him in any meaningful way. You're just pestering mm -hmm. a guy at the lowest point in his life. Right. Yeah. I'm really sorry to say that our God works on the same system as that interdimensional being that bothers Superman. So yeah, if you're not going to say his name backwards, unfortunately, he's not gonna. Yeah. Not going to help you. Out. And they even were like, yeah, turn the camera off. Yeah. Yeah. It did not go off. Yep. So then we hear from Stacey Campbell of Revival Now Ministries. I love these names. I love these action. Yeah. Right. Impact. Yes. Yeah. All those. Now. Yeah. But she explains that God can't help but love you no matter how much you suck. <laughs> Will comes back on. The, the, the guy from Thailand comes back on to tell us uh, how important he is and the work he does is. Right. Is this where Will says, I have a dream? Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. It's just... Willie, Wilbur, Wilfred. It is so, he's trying so hard to be a little preacher man here. He really is, <laughs> yeah. He, he, he does this thing, he's like, I had a dream, and then you watch him pause and be like, fucking Martha King ruined that for everybody. You know, I have dreams. I'm going to have dreams. <laughs> I got dreams too. But anyways, in his dream, God showed him a church full of drug dealers and gangbangers, and they were fighting, and he's like, stop it. And then God was like, hey, that's who I want you to treat. And that God, Albert Einstein. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He goes, I dreamed of a church filled with prostitutes and drug addicts. And I'm like, that is a fucking blast. I like this church. I've Where had I that dream too. Yeah, yeah. No, I got it. <laughs> so. Uh, but so then, so Darren starts his little wrap up, right? He's, he's, he's like, you know, I was shocked by just how many different, Races God loved. Look at all of the people. Right. Was, huh? <laughs> he goes, at one point he goes, you know, and I realized something in my travels. It's not about how slick your presentation is. And I'm like, are you speaking directly to Karen's best mm -hmm. worst here, dude? <laughs> <laughs> it could be better. I love the whole, like, you know, God can use the least of the people, the kids. The, but, you know, you can also use someone who's good, maybe. Right. Occasionally, right, yeah, you, know, you have access. Uh, yeah, just. To Shakespeare. It's like, yeah. A tripod, perhaps. Throw one in. <laughs> mm hmm So, it, and, and then, so he, he finally, he, we wrap up, he's going to shoehorn in a trip to California from his Kickstarter supporters. 
I mean, it's just the start of wine country season. Yeah, no, right. like he has, you, got, you can't blame him. He has <laughs> right, to talk right. to Jesus in wine country. So he goes to a new age festival in California. And this is amazing. It's so good. Right. Because we see him trying to like Christian people while they're trying to Wicca him. Mm hmm. So <laughs> this like ends in like a lady like suddenly manifesting as a snake and she starts doing like snake movements and they're trying to like use their Christian magic and then a different person is trying to use her witch magic and the chick doing the snake is like, I get to decide which one of you win. <laughs> it's the and it's, they do a cutaway to the preacher guy and he was like, I didn't like that because she was she was doing her thing and I'm you're supposed to do my magic. It's my magic. <laughs> Listen. Paid forty nine ninety nine for that booth. Yeah, he's the male of this relationship. All right. He will pursue <laughs> and he will win. Jesus. And if not, he'll slap her with a leather wristlet. Yeah, right. So then we also, we meet Sammy. He prays for Sammy. And this is another instance where like we see video of Sammy walking up and then we cut to Robbie telling us how everything went with Sammy. And we're like, well, you have video of how everything went right. with Sammy. Why aren't you showing us the video of the, the claims that you're making? And Sammy was, is he the real eager one who probably moved to L.A. to be on camera? And yes. Right, exactly. Yes. Yeah, no. one. yeah. He was, he was ready. I've also seen Sammy on a couple of like gay for bay bang us websites. So, you know, <laughs> yes. he's, 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 <laughs> you offer to put Sammy on, on a screen, he's going to say yes. Yeah, right, right. right. Yeah, but so then, but Darren kind of wraps up with his like, you know, but I, but, you know, I learned something here today, but he, he doesn't have anything. So he just starts doing no weird Christian imagery about God on a white horse with a sword. He At one point, he says the love of our deity, but he doesn't know that deity is pronounced deity and not deity. So it sounds like he says Yikes. the love of our daddy. And I laugh so <laughs> hard. <laughs> Big daddy Jesus on his white horse with his muscles. Well, that's the thing. Is he goes, you know, God rides a white horse and carries a sword. Anyway, credits. And I'm like, no, you can't just throw. I want, <laughs> let's explore cavalry God a bit more. Hold on. Also, it's in his mouth. Read your Bible. <laughs> yeah, right, it's right. That, that too. Ugh. I've never been as bored as I was. I mean, this is this is supposed to be about miracles and demons, and I'm I'm totally falling asleep with this movie. Right? That is the miracle of this movie. Because <laughs> that's nearly impossible. Truly. We're gonna show you magic. We're gonna show you that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. The fact that we made it through in one piece is the fucking miracle. Well, Karen, thank you so much for suffering alongside us today. If our listeners wanted to hear more from you, where would be the best place to find you? Just look up Deconversion Therapy Podcast. You'll find our social media, our podcast, all that stuff. Yep. Awesome. And of course, uh, you'll find Karen's show linked on the show notes for this episode as well. And well, that does it for our review of Furious Love. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to appease the demons again next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, it's episode 420. So that <gasps> means we'll be joined by Michael Marshall for the 1941 scare film, Wild Weed. Oh. She should have said no. Oh, that'll be <laughs> fun. All right, so with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 419 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Karen and perhaps an even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode and access to our Patreon-only pajama party next weekend. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Gay, The Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptocrat, available wherever Wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and Vivid Drafts on Mars. All the other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. The Abercrombie girl lives in a mansion now because she realized that they used her without signing any kind of paperwork and she sued Wanderlust Films. <laughs> awesome. Sammy returned his Christianity the next day and got a full refund. <laughs> Darren made two more of these fucking movies oh, no. and where he has to go from here terrifies me. Oh, no.
sorry, Eli, I stole your joke. <laughs> no, it's perfect. What's your middle name, Eli? No, I always call people by the middle name Bethesda if I don't know it. So yeah, right, right. holy Bethesda spirit. No, I meant yours. What's yours? Oh, Rosenberg, because I am the most Jewish human on the planet. <laughs> That's all right. You're chosen. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Very chosen. And and my name is fake, so you can't guess. <laughs> so, you can't, so we don't even don't have that. Make it up. Yeah, right. Make it up. Yeah, exactly. It's Bethesda, yeah. actually. It's, it's, it's Noah Bethesda illusions. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2023. All rights reserved. Partnerships. When done right, they can be very powerful. That's why the experts at ENT and Allergy Associates teamed up with the specialists at Cooperman Barnabas Medical Center to form a clinical affiliation, creating a world-class team to treat complex ear, nose, and throat problems, as well as head and neck cancers. When a patient requires advanced care, ENT and Allergy Physicians are able to get them in to see a Cooperman Barnabas Medical Center specialist within 48 hours. Medical records are sent instantly, so patients can transition seamlessly from one specialist to the other. If surgery is necessary, aftercare treatment is done back at their local ENT and Allergy office. That's the power of partnership. ENT and Allergy Associates and Cooperman Barnabas Medical Center. To schedule your same-day appointment at ENT and Allergy, call 855-ENTA-DOC today or book online anytime at entandallergy.com. Every journey can use an experienced guide, and your educational journey is no different. At Arizona State University, we're with you from day one to graduation and beyond. Our 300-plus programs are designed specifically for online learning with state-of-the-art technology and personalized support services to empower your success. Find your next journey at ASU, ranked number one in innovation for eight consecutive years. Visit us at asuonline.asu.edu to learn more.